Is it really worthwhile going from 110 volts to 220 volts in the home? In order to answer this properly, it's necessary to know the difference between both services. A very high percentage of households in Mexico and other countries use the 110 volt service, which is actually 127 volts, because they think that the 220 volt service implies a higher light bill. In order to do a comparison, let's look at the service a 127 volt user gets. When a 127 volt contract is signed, the power meter delivers two cables into the house. One cable is called the neutral, shown here in white, and the other cable is called the live or L1, shown in black. These cables go to the circuit breakers and from there they go on to the household circuits, usually divided into two sections. Suppose one section consists in the light bulbs and outlets of the first floor, and the other section is made up of light bulbs and outlets in the second floor. To deliver power to both circuits, a jumper is used between the inputs of the two breakers and then is connected to the live cable supplied by the meter. In all cases, the neutral cable, white, serves as a return to both circuits, both for the second floor and for the first floor. In this way, all appliances in the first floor are powered through breaker number two, while all appliances in the second floor are powered through breaker number one. If we take a voltmeter and measure across neutral and live cables, the reading will be approximately 127 volts. This voltage is also known as 110. Suppose the user decides to change his contract to 220 volts. His meter is replaced by a different one, which delivers three cables. One of them, shown in white, is the neutral, which was already there in the 127 volt connection, and also a pair of black cables, each one of them a live cable, but coming from different power lines in the distribution network. These two black wires are known as phases, or as L1 and L2. If we now take a voltage reading across the neutral in one of the phases, that is, one of the black wires, we will read approximately 127 volts. If we now measure between the neutral and the other phase, that is, the other black wire, we will also have a reading of approximately 127 volts. Both readings don't have to be identical. This allows us to use your old 127 volt electrical appliances. If we now take our voltmeter and measure across both phases, the reading will be approximately 220 volts. We now have also 220 volts available for other applications that we'll see in a moment. Going back to the changes in the wiring, it will be necessary to remove the jumper that join the inputs of both breakers and then connect one phase to each breaker. In this way, phase L1 will feed the first floor and phase L2 will feed the second floor. Up to this point, there seems to be no advantage in switching to 220 volts. To really understand the convenience of having a 220 volt service, let's go back to our original wiring and suppose we install an electric heater on the first floor. Imagine that the heater uses 1270 watts. As soon as we turn it on, it will start pulling 10 amps through breaker number 2. If the breaker is rated at 32 amps, by using this electric heater, we will have used 30% of the breaker's capacity. If we happen to install another pair of equal heaters, we will be pulling 30 amps through the breaker, and the breaker will start to trip, and we will have to turn off at least one heater to prevent the breaker from being damaged or overheating of the wiring. On the other hand, if we have 220 volt service, we can add a couple of additional lines and breakers which carry 220 volts power to three special 220 volt outlets. So we can connect three 1270 watt heaters 
but this time we will use heaters rated at 220 volts. Since they work with almost twice the voltage, the current flowing through the cables and the breakers will be about one half. This is because of what's consumed are the result of multiplying the voltage applied by the current flowing. A 1270 watt heater designed to run at 127 volts will pull 10 amps, while a 1270 watt heater designed to run on 220 volts will pull 5.8 amps. If there are three heaters installed, the total current from the breaker will be just 17.4 amps, a little bit over half the capacity of the 32 amp breaker. For practical purposes, we can think that by using 220 volts, the amperage is reduced by one half. That's why high power household appliances are usually made to run at 220 volts. Such is the case of air conditioners, electric heating, electric stove, electric clothes dryer, as well as electric water heater. Another important factor that limits the number of amps that we can pull through our wiring is the power company meter's capacity. These devices usually come for a maximum of 100 amps, so in a typical installation you cannot exceed that amount. Due to global warming, the use of alternative energies is becoming commonplace, such as solar panel systems, which can be expanded as new power needs increase. The high cost and environmental damage of fossil fuels are creating a trend towards the elimination of natural gas and other oil derivatives, both for lighting and transportation, so that the time will come when all the energy used in the home will come from solar energy. This will require more robust and functional wiring in order to handle larger amounts of current than traditional ones. If we add an electric car to this, it will be another additional load which requires an adequate electrical installation. We conclude, therefore, that it is highly advisable to contract a 220 volt utility instead of the inefficient 127 volt system.